are now listening to Lower Road Radio. Hey, welcome one and all to the number one podcast, winter, spring, and fall. Talking sports for the thrill of it all. Hey, talking life, but we're killing it all. Jason and Dan with the master plan. These are dangerous men with the mic in the hand. Huh? Four to five winners everywhere that we go. You're a part of the team. Lower Road Radio. Dad life, thug life, bright lights in sight. All right, what? Dad life, thug life, bright lights in sight. All right, yeah. Dad life, thug life, bright lights in sight. All right, what? four to five winners everywhere that we go. You're a part of the team. Lower Road Radio. Let's get it. What? At Tanagra, when the walls fell, this is Dan always coming at you another time for Lower Road Radio with my co-host, as always, Jason. How you doing today? I'm down 22 pounds. Down 22 pounds in one month. Now, what? That's what you 30... said you were last episode. So, how's no, the last few days? I did not give any numbers last <laughs> oh. episode. I said I'm in a new set of clothes. Oh, I see. I'm officially down 22 pounds. Keto. In... Keto. Life. Yep. 30 days. Keto works. 30 days, 22 pounds. That's like a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight for – well, first of all, all doctors, anybody you ever talk to will say that's not healthy. Yes. But you know what? What's not healthy is carrying around an extra 22 pounds. Tell those doctors that. Yeah. What now, doctors? You need to lose at least 30 pounds <laughs> in the next you need to lose two months. 130 pounds. <laughs> um, that show's great. I really want to just visit – just Houston, hang out with them. And yeah. just go hang out with Dr. Nows Arden. Uh, they always call him Dr. Now. Oh, my goodness. What would, his, what would he tell you? What would his advice to you be? I don't know. Well, that's the other thing is he always says, like, don't eat fatty foods. Like, he does not give keto advice. No, he does not. You know, so. You know, Dr. Now's got a couple of pounds he could lose, too. I'm not yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, but living a good I'm just, life. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> a little hypocritical. <laughs> All right, so Jason, um, normally I ask you how you're doing today. Oh, and you did. Okay, you said that. Yeah. Um, so really, so we went camping the last. I just got back this afternoon. Okay. Um, a little fried, to be honest with you, from camping. Like your skin or just well, I mean, I've been out in the sun a little bit more than normal, but just energy wise in general. Um, I also my hot water heater was not working when I got home, and so I had to wrestle with that for That's a while. Nice. Yeah. That was I almost punched my hot water heater. I was very frustrated. Pilot light go out. Yeah, but then when it go on, I had to take it apart. I've replaced the thermal coupler before. It's a long, it's a whole thing. Flux you know capacitor. I mean? yeah, yeah, it's like uh, you know, I got to get parts for Millennium Millennium Falcon. Three point twenty one gigawatts. But um, anyway, so we went to uh, uh, Mohican here yeah. in Ohio. That's a great. And park. Uh, we took a river trip, and so we seven mile river trip down canoe. There. Well, he, so raft the the kids got a uh, kayak. Okay. Each they all wanted a, their individual kayak, and then Eric and I in the canoe. And um, so we're going along. It's going okay. Everything's going fine. We're do, we're do having fun. The kids are like ramming into each other and having yeah. fun. It's really simple. And the river is super lazy. It's not like there's any rapids or right, anything. Right. Right. So it's very easy to do. Um, but then Abby wants to. Um, Abby capsizes because Levi ra- like totally oh, railed yeah. into her, and she yeah. capsized. Well, she's got some water in her canoe, so we have to like figure all of that out. So we try to empty it out, and now she just wants to get in the canoe with Erica. So she's in the canoe with Erica, and I'm in her um, kayak. So we're going for it. Everything's well, good. First of all, did they size her down to a kid kayak? Um, so I now think, you're a grown man yeah. in a kid kayak. Well, I don't know that it – yeah, I think it was a kid kayak actually. Was but, it sinking? No, it wasn't sinking, okay. but it wasn't – See, and then I saw some other adults in like longer kayaks. I'm like, yeah. oh, I want that. <laughs> you're anyway, in the short school bus. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> I, we're, we're moving forward. That's what Abby wants. She was getting worn out by herself. Yeah. So we're coming up on this um, fork in the river. Yeah. And I'm like, well, do we go left or right? I yeah. don't know. Yeah. You know, and Erica said, well, I'm sure it doesn't matter. I'm sure it wraps around. And I'm like 99% well, sure Well, to she's say right. sure. Yeah. I, I'm sure. Yeah. You're sure? Well, there are, were no signs. And we saw, you know, maybe some people going one way. So we said, well, it doesn't really matter. So Levi's like, I'm going left. And he starts going left. And then Abby and Erica are kind of like with him. And then I look over and Michaela's like, I'm going this way. And so she starts going to oh, the right. Oh, gosh. And um, and so I got to – now I'm in the middle, and I got to get over there as soon as – as fast as I can. Yeah. But the thing doesn't – you know what I mean? It's not like a, a boat, you know, with like a Well, it thing. is a boat. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly it's a boat. It's not a motor boat. Oh, you know? okay, okay. So um, so I'm trying to get over there, get over there, get over there. But all the, the, the currents are pulling me one way. And so in my 
effort to get over there, I ram into the side of this thing, and then I got to get out and pull. Well, then it mine capsizes <laughs> because I'm trying to get back, and I yell at Michaela, "Stop! Just you know, what right. I mean? just hang out where you're at right now because you can. The la- the river's so lazy. Yeah, well, well, so lazy that you couldn't flow against it. Well, well at the at the uh, fork, listen, the, make up your listen, mind. At the fork, the currents got a little. It's stronger. either got a current or it's lazy. At the fork, there were currents. Okay, so I get past that, but now. I'm capsized, <laughs> and um, Michaela's up front, like waiting for me. And I got to tell you, getting water out of a kayak yeah. in the river by yourself not an easy task. Yeah, it's I'm I don't know what I'm doing. So I try to get up to the bank, and so I got the thing, and I'm kind of like knee deep in water, and I'm trying to hold onto my oar while yeah. I'm trying to turn over the kayak. And when I turn over the kayak, water does come up, but then when it comes back up, it gets more water again. And then I'm just starting to figure it out. And now I realize I'm about shin deep in mud. Oh gosh! And because You're I've been sinking. sinking this yeah. whole time and didn't realize I was sinking because it's like super muddy. And so, um, and so, like, <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what to do. So I yank out of the mud, lose my left shoe oh. in the process. And I'm thinking, well, I could dig down for the shoe, but I can't let the kayak go or yeah. my oar, yeah. you know? And so, anyway, that was like, it was super stressful. And Michaela's just up there waiting for me. And then I look up, and now she's capsized because she's <laughs> waiting for me. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's by herself. I'm trying to figure this out. Erica and the other ones, they're gone. They're gone. Yeah. They don't know where we're at. And uh, so finally I get up to Michaela and with way more water in my kayak than I'm comfortable with, but I just want to get up there. Yeah. I said, hey, is everything okay? And she's like, I lost my oar. <laughs> so you lost your oar? Well, it was when you told me to stop and then something happened and then I lost it. And I went, I'm like, oh my gosh. So now I got to get out of my kayak again and I got to get her thing taken care of. Yeah. And so now we're two kayaks with one oar <laughs> trying to float down the river. That's not easy. No. So I just told her, like, hold on to the back of mine. Yeah. Except she can't, like, we can't, like, attach the, the front of hers to the back of mine. Because it just doesn't work like that. I mean, I, I didn't have shoelaces. One of the reasons my shoe lost so easily. <laughs> so that's really difficult. So I can't yeah. keep any kind of direction. So finally, we make it to where these two things intersect. Right. And they're sitting there waiting for us. Like, where have you been? We've been waiting for a half an hour. I'm like, I don't want really to hear it. But they're like, we started to freak out when we saw the oar flowing, <laughs> floating down the river. Just an uh, oar and no kayaks. Yeah. And they can't see us. We're not in sight. Yeah. You know? Oh, it was... It was, and then by then I'm just. So did they get the oar? Yeah, they got the oar okay. for us. So we had the extra oar, but now I'm in this kayak in like river water, just sitting in river water for Mud the last half of the river trip. River water, and yeah. It was the the first half of the trip was very pleasant, very. I would highly recommend it. Yeah. Uh, I would not recommend doing what I did. Um, yeah. yeah. On the last, and so like an idiot. When we are finished and I, you know, pull off to the side, I get out of my boat and they're helping and I got one shoe on, you know, (laughs) what the heck happened to this guy? I was pretty disheveled. It was. So you couldn't get the shoe. You just left the shoe. I left the shoe. It was a foot deep in the water and I had to get the, I I just, I only had two hands and the river's going. I wasn't like off the side, you know. I thought you said you went up on the, like the shore. No, I was like close to it, but there was no place to, it was like a bank. It wasn't like anywhere you could walk on. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it was, there was no place to get off. Now, by the time I got to Michaela, there was a place to get off, but then by then the shoe was a hundred yards back, and <laughs> and even if I walked back, even if I could, I would have never been able to find it. Yeah. So my left shoe is sitting somewhere in the Mohican River. That's pretty great right now. Yeah, it's gonna fossilize, and then someday, like a million years from now, they're gonna find, a, find shoe a shoe and no body attached. Yeah, it'd be like why. Something about the people of this time, they only wore one shoe. Or, yeah, you know, they worship the left foot. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, well, I'm here, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be in uh, civilization again. You know, it was a good Did, Was kayaking fun? It was awesome. I highly recommend it. So uh, we have an uncle who lives over near Hoover Reservoir. Okay. And he's got a couple kayaks. He's invited me out a couple times, but I'm like... It's a lot of fun. I would like to, but it's it one is, of those things... Yeah. It's very easy, too. I mean, I made it sound very hard, but it's really not. It's Well, it's you're really, also taking care of your kids. Yeah. And, um, no, it's yeah. a lot of fun. Okay. It's a lot... I, I highly recommend it. Would you ever buy a kayak? Yeah. In fact, that's one of the things that we talked about, was yeah. like buying all our own kayaks. Because yeah. Because that would be fun. No, I, I think I would enjoy it. I don't know. I think my kids would enjoy it for about five minutes. I feel like a river is more fun than like a dam or a lake because it's like your scenery is always changing. You well, know? it depends. I mean, like some places like Delaware State Park, 
there's a lot of little inlets and yeah, little things that you true. could explore. Yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, I wouldn't it's a go good right workout down the too. Because you're constantly kind of up, so it's like you're not just working out your arms; like your whole body's feeling it, you know. Yeah. So it's it's a good workout, but I, I highly recommend it. But um, okay, I was happy when my trip was over. Needless. So to this say. is like a one last. You took the advice from the last show. Mm -hmm. One yeah. last little mini one vacation, last mini vacation camp out. It was actually it was a cop out. This is a classic parent thing to do. We have one uh, birthday in July and one oh, birthday yeah. in August, Split so it. we do it a, a middle of the road yeah. trip. You know, yeah. Um, to uh, well, to we see. did a cop out. We used our uh, passes to the amusement park As, for a kid's birthday. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, we'll go to the amusement park for the birthday. Yeah, yeah. that's Yay. the best birthday ever. Yay. Yeah, we were going anyways. Right. Yeah, <laughs> they don't know the difference. Totally happening. Yeah, we actually got so. so Teddy's birthday was last month. We actually got him a funnel cake as a birthday cake. Oh, that's fun. So that was fun. I would like a funnel cake as a birthday cake. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. We got. Oh, here's the other thing that happened. So we got these A-frame cabins. That was the other thing. I told Erica, listen, if we're going camping in August, it's hot. We're gonna find. Let's find a little cabin somewhere yeah. that's got air conditioning. Yes. So that was great. Totally recommend it. Highly recommend it. It was a lot of good. It, a lot of good. I don't know what I'm saying. It, it had a little um, loft. Yeah. The girls slept up in the loft. It was really, really cool little spot. Um, except last night, I'm barbecuing at like 11 o'clock at night because we went for a late night putt putt game. Right. And then we get back and I'm grilling hamburgers and I look over and about, I don't know, five feet from me, do you know what I see scurrying around? Raccoon. Guess again. Coyote. Guess again. Fox. Guess again. Skunk. Yes, okay. it was a skunk. <laughs> and I've never run so fast. Um, yeah. You know, because you left uh, the wife I'd have rather behind. seen any of the things. I'd have rather seen a bear than a yeah. skunk. Oh my gosh. So I run inside. They're inside and they're like, what the heck? You know, I'm like, <laughs> <You know? laughs> and all the food's on the grill. Yeah, all the food's on the grill. And they're like, I'm like, -k 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 -kunk, you know. <laughs> so we kind of like make a bunch of noise and it kind of, you know, goes, you know, runs yeah. away. But then later we're all done eating and, um, and I kind of look around and I don't really see it anymore. And I take the girls down like, hike down the, the thing to go to the restroom. Right. And so we're sitting there waiting for the restroom. I get a call from Erica. She said, I don't think you should come back. I'm like, why? She's like, there are like three skunks here now. Oh, gosh. And they're all, she's like, they're under the car. They're running around everything, you know? Oh, my she's gosh. She's like, we can't get them to leave, you know? Oh, so we did give them go away. No, none, no spraying, thank goodness. But right. But that was, yeah. That's fun. Yeah. And then we told, and then when we were checking out, Erica's giving the key to, just so you know, there's like a bunch of skunks running around camp number, cabin number right. five. And the high school girl taking the key was like, okay, I'll write it down. <laughs> like, no, you're not telling anybody. Nothing's happening here. That's pretty funny. So I'm a little exhausted. Yeah. It was a good trip. I'm yeah. happy. We had a good time. Um, I, uh, I won in putt putt both times. You, you and know? I should putt putt. So I went out with the kids mm -hmm. well, recently. Yeah, I won. Yeah, of course, you got to win. Of course, yeah. I think Shelby came in second. Mm -hmm. I think Estelle came in third. Yeah. So Erica's actually pretty good at putt putt. That's the thing because she's just she's so competitive. One of the biggest things in putt putt, especially if you're going with your family, is you just lose focus. Yeah. At some point, you're just like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, just do it. Every shot for her is 18th hole Hyper masters. Yeah. You know, like it's it's every shot matters, and so because she takes it so seriously, she usually ends up winning. Um, but I did beat her by one stroke the first game. And the second game, I think I beat her by three strokes, I think. So, yeah, a lot of fun. All right, so every week, Jason, we have three things that we come and talk about. Jason, what's your first thing? My first thing, uh, this just actually happened the other night. Um, the basketball tournament that they play? Yeah. It is over. Yes. The Buckeyes, the alumni team, won. Mm -hmm. They did? They did. They beat Marquette. How am I not even paying attention? How so, are you not paying attention? I don't know. So this is the whole thing with the Elam rules, right? Right. And so it's – Yeah, I always forget this. This It's great. Mm -hmm. It's a tournament. The winner – the winning team makes $2 million. So you divide that up you know, between the eight, nine players, whatever's on the team. So, I mean, they walk away with two hundred grand each. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, On the Buckeye team, last year, for the past four or five years, they're called Scarlet and Gray. Yeah. They rebranded themselves as Carmen's Crew. Oh. Okay. Carmen's Crew. I like that. I like it. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. So, like, this year's team consisted of Aaron Kraft, John Diebler, William Buford, David Lighty. So, it was a... That's a good team. It was a pretty good team. Yeah. It's basically the same team that they had, what, five years ago? Except they're all kind of together. Like, they're all crossing paths at the oh, same yeah. time. So like, at that point, they might have had one that was a freshman, one that was a senior, one, you know, so... These guys, yeah, and these guys yeah. are still in their prime. They're... Yeah. Upper 20s. Yeah, athletically speaking, they're yeah. right where they need to be. So 
based on my fantasy football stats for years. Yeah. Age 27 is your peak athletic year. Dang. So, yeah, we're past that. <laughs> but these guys are all in that ballpark. Yeah. You know, upper 20s. And uh, they won. So the Elam rules, if you've, if you've never heard of it, this every basketball game on the planet should go to this. Yeah. At the first dead ball, after the four-minute mark in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. the game clock shuts off. Yes. Okay? Yes. yes. And then a target score is set by adding seven points to the leading team's score. Right. And so the first team to reach that target score wins. So if the score is 50 to 20... The target score is now 57. That's right. And if the next team goes on a crazy run and gets to 57 before the other team does, they win. Right. So there's a couple things that happen that change the end of the game. One, the game will end with a game-winning basket. Every time. Every time. You and can't run the clock out. There's no – and that's the other thing is there's no bleeding of the clock. That well, There's no point to it. There's no point to it. And there's no fouling incentive to Even stop the clock. Even if you're winning – um, you don't want to bleed the clock like coming up to that point. You actually want to score as much as you can to pad your lead yes. to make it even harder for the other team to come That's back. That's right. So there's no reason ever to bleed the clock. It's no. play as hard well, as you can. Well, there is no clock at that point. Well, I'm saying even before, like once the clock stops, like the three minutes before the clock stops, let's say we're winning 25 to 15, right? We're yes. Like, Boy, if we could get five more points that make it even harder for them to come back. You know, like yeah. you're going to play hard the whole time. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't, I think it's, it's, it's very different than anything like yeah. that we've ever experienced basketball wise, but I think it's genius. I think it's revolutionary. I think every basketball league should do it. I think what they should do for real is the next college basketball tournament, like the preseason NIT mm -hmm. type of stuff, which oh, some yeah. of those, like the Alaskan sure. shootout, some yeah. of those Hawaii uh -huh. or Maui it. classic. Yeah. Just do the Elam uh -huh. rules for the whole thing. Yeah, or all like preseason NBA stuff. Absolutely. Like that. The All-Star game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The All-Star game. That'd be fun. It see. would be. It yeah. would it would change the dynamic of it. Yeah. I feel like it would be so good that like if if I wasn't if I was in charge of that and I wasn't prepared to actually do it, I would never show it to anybody because it's that much better. Right? Say it again. Like if I'm um oh, what's the Gee, I want to say Roger Goodell. That's the NFL. If I'm a David Stern, <laughs> he's the other one. He's the old one. The bald guy looks like a serial killer. Yeah, I know who you're talking anyway, about. Anyway, um, if I'm him, Robert Mueller, that's baseball. No, <laughs> no. What? No, don't worry about it. Um, Paul Giamatti. No. Okay. Bart Giamatti. Oh, that's Bart Giamatti. If I know, if I'm in charge of of basketball, and I'm thinking, oh, let's try it out on the all-star game, I'm not going to try it out on the all-star game unless I'm prepared to implement it all the time. Because oh, I think yeah, once yeah, yeah. people see it, then they're going to, they're going to really want it because I do think it's that much better. It really is. Yeah. So preseason, you could do it in preseason. Just say, we're doing this in the preseason. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It's also for the sake of preseason going to be better too. Cause the whole point of preseason is to, you know, prep, prepare yourself and to, um, you know, get ready. It's, it's going to make the game continue on yes. in a way that it's going to put you in game situations, I think better than, um, and you basically know. you're still playing a full game cause they don't shut the clock off until yeah. the end of the fourth yeah, it's quarter. It's not like you're getting short changed and the game's going to end in 15 minutes right. or something. Now the difference, cause I had this thought too, what if in the NBA, they just said first one to a hundred. Well, the Houston Rockets have done that by halftime. Yeah. Right. First one to a hundred would be a lot of fun. I mean, it would be a high flying. Well, and see the other thing is you'd want to play good defense cause preventing yeah. them from scoring. The problem with first one to a hundred is you could have some games that would last forever. Like remember the Mark Price Cleveland Cavaliers? Yeah, teams? like those games would end like sixty-five to seventy or something like yeah. that. Yeah, like those games That'd would be an eight-hour game. Long. Yeah, so I don't think that could work. But first one to a hundred. I mean, in today's NBA, I guess it probably could. It work. would work. It would completely change everything. And if you were a guy, if you were a team that was like built around slowing the ball down and making it ugly, that would be a huge disadvantage. To would it? You wear the other team out. They foul. They yeah. You get lazy. Still, and foul, I mean, you... in order to get a hundred, you have to score a hundred, right? Yeah. So, like, if you're thinking you're a slow the ball down kind of a team, what if you, you had don't a really deep? We... Yeah, but think about this. What if you had a really deep bench? Mm -hmm. You just and wear them out. We're just gonna wear them out. I guess we're I gonna know. just keep playing. I we'll want to play see all night. it. I want to see it that that much. Well, there, once again, there's no reason not to do it in the preseason. Yeah, they should. You know what they should do next year, this coming year. Mm -hmm. The Eastern Conference play Elam rules. The yeah. Western Conference play first to 100 yeah 
Okay, so it's similar to DH, non-DH in baseball. Uh -huh. Each conference has their own set of rules. And when they play each other, home court. I like it. So sometimes you're playing Elam rules. Sometimes you're playing first to 100. I feel like so the there East, would actually be... I feel like the East should, should take Elam. definitely the Elam rules. That's right. And the West should be first to 100. Any kind of advantage. Yeah. yeah. But can you imagine? Every, it would be a true home court advantage mm -hmm. to play your style ball. It would be. I don't see any reason that any of these things should not happen. Somebody call somebody. Speaking of things that should happen. That was my first thing. Here's the thing that did happen. Is this your first I thing? I don't know if you saw this. Yeah. The Montgomery Biscuits. Never heard of them. Minor League Baseball team. They had a millennial night. Is their mascot called Gravy? Should be. I don't know that much about the Montgomery Biscuits. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but uh, you know how these... Um, if their mascot isn't a dog named Gravy... Or a they're, pig they're, messing they're messing yeah, up. They're yeah. messing up. They're messing up. So, you know, you go to a minor league baseball game. I actually went to a Clippers game with friend of the show, Brandon. Okay. And uh, they had the dancing bat boy there. Yeah. The break dancing bat boy or yeah. something like that. You know, or they'll always have, they'll something, have like, yeah. they'll have something weird, you know, some kind of attraction to get you out for the night, you know. Um, well, the Montgomery Biscuits had a special millennial night. Okay. And uh, in the millennial night, celebrating millennials, they had uh, avocados. Okay. Um, selfie stations, yeah. or avocado burgers, selfie oh, stations, yeah. Yeah. a napping area. Nice. And they gave away participation ribbons. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love everything about it. I knew you would like that. So um, I don't really have anything else other I bet, than I, I just bet like that. I it hacked a lot of people and off. I knew, yeah, apparently it says millennials outraged after baseball <laughs> team advertises millennial night. <laughs> Who cares if they're outraged? What our, are they going to do about it? Our cousin, I don't know if you saw this on Facebook, um, he uh, was at Kroger the other day coming out of the parking lot, and some like old lady approaches him asking like if he knew a good contractor for her house because she needed to do something. He's mm -hmm. like, you've mistaken me for a homeowner. I'm a millennial. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I mean, millennial generation yeah. is just a whole completely yeah, different – Yeah, I spent an hour and a half working on my hot water heater. Millennials aren't doing that. No. No. Not at all. They're renting, and they're going to call their landlord. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, that's honestly – it's there's not a lot there. Uh, but I just knew you would love it. I do love it. And uh, you know, is there anything else to add to that? More I feel like of that there should, should happen. Be. Well, so I mean, we could do a really quick Mount Rushmore of millennials. millennial things. I mean, we just nailed half of them. Participation I trophy. Think part participation trophy is number one. Absolutely. Um, I, feel I would say smartphone. Okay. Like when I think of millennials, I think this is a generation yeah, that largely grew up, the grew up yeah. with a smartphone. Okay. For the most so what part. about like kale? Like eating things that like probably shouldn't even eat. I don't know if that's a millennial thing. Do you eat kale? Just be a healthy thing. I actually like kale. Yeah, I had kale some the other day. So, <laughs> um, participate participation trophies. Um, I mean, the avocado thing is super popular. Yeah, I mean, I like avocados. I like too. avocados too. I think it's funny. <laughs> I do think that it's they funny. did the avocado burger. Um, what a yeah. I mean, not just in the baseball format, not what you can give away, but just what do you identify as what, millennials? What do you think of when you think of millennial? I say millennial. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Participation trophy. Yeah. Everybody gets one. Yeah. I mean, that's the George Washington. Yeah, I think that's the biggest one. That is that is the Mount Rushmore, just four participation trophies. <laughs> Everybody wins. Because how dare we put one Oh, yeah, well, another, see, that's true. You know? Yeah. So I guess the Mount Rushmore, the millennial Mount Rushmore has all of the presidents on it. There you go. There Everybody wins. Everybody. We, we should not elevate one president above another. Uh, no. You know, they're How all, dare one be So every time the another other. president comes, then we, we, you know. Although the millennials are the ones screaming at Trump right now. Some of them, but maybe not as much as you think. I mean, I was looking at some t statistics, and his millennial numbers have actually gotten better over time. Awesome. Um, but, of course, you know. News is not going to – fake news is not hey, going to tell you that. do you know why Donald Trump doesn't wear eyeglasses? Why? He's already got 2020. That's the next election. Oh. Trump's already got, got 2020. It. Got it. Okay. He's already got it. What's your next thing? <laughs> we might – I don't do a lot of editing, but I might delete that. <laughs> that was my next thing. No. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, okay. So my next thing. Uh, local – Former. This is local news, mm -hmm. so maybe not everybody in the country will have seen this. Former Ohio Bobcat player is playing mm -hmm. international basketball. Failed a drug test. Okay. 
it came back that he was pregnant. Oh, I actually I saw this. Did you see the story? Yeah, that's he used, really funny. He used somebody else's urine. His girlfriend's. They said it was like a crazy way to find out that your girlfriend's pregnant. Yes, yes. <laughs> How messed up is that? Yeah, that is messed up. I mean, it's messed up in so many ways. Mm-hmm. You know, it's harder to fake a drug test than you might think. It's not just getting somebody else's pee. It's got to be actually. There's a temperature. There's a specific there's, temperature. Yeah. Because I took a drug test for when I used to do construction. I worked for my father-in-law, and I failed it. Not because I tested positive for anything, <laughs> but my apparently my pee temperature was not it was not warm enough, and uh, I was like, "Well, what am I supposed to do about that?" Yeah. And they're like, "Well, we're gonna have to have you go again." I'm like, "Isn't it just gonna be the same thing?" You know, <laughs> like, "Well, you need to come out with it quicker." You were in there a little while. I'm like, "What are you talking about?" It's like it's a ticking so, time bomb. As soon as you pee in the cup, you yeah. got to rush and out. And then with here's it. the other thing is while I'm sitting there because it's just they have like three little bathroom stalls yeah. with toilets there, yeah. and they got a bunch of people there. And the but the the um the nurse or the whatever she's yeah. not a nurse, whatever the pee doctor, she, she has to come in and, and get it from you yeah. and stuff like that. And um and she doesn't have to sit there with you while you do it. Yeah. But their policy is that the second time that that you have to go. They have to watch you pee. Then the they cup. have to watch you pee to make sure you're not, yeah. you know, which, fine, I can perform if somebody's watching me pee. That's not a problem. But the problem was when I got there in the morning, I was like, I need to get this over with because I need to go number two, like, immediately. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm in a hurry, and I go there, and I do the thing, ba 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 and they're yeah. like, sorry, this doesn't work. We're going to have to have you go again. And my first thought was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just. What do you mean it doesn't work? It was too cold. My keep my pee was Again, too cold. The second no, time. No, the first time it was okay, too cold. Okay, okay. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll go back in. <laughs> and my first thought was like, I guess I'm just gonna have to do this. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. want to have to poop in this room, but I will if I have to. <laughs> and she was like, but the second time somebody has a nurse has to be in there with you. I'm like, what? <laughs> Just so that you know, yeah. I'm going to sit on the <laughs> toilet. You can still watch me pee, but and then there's going like, to be some other stuff happening. I was like, can I go and come back later? They're like, no, you can't. That's the whole thing. Like, you have to do this now. <laughs> it was the most stressful, like, I don't know, hour of my life. And so I'm just chugging water as fast as I can, just focusing on just doing this. So, yeah, it was not – not did you, anyway. So did – I need to hear this. Yeah. Did you pee – in front of her, and I was, then poop. No, yeah, I, I held the poop at bay, thank goodness. <laughs> and I peed, you know, and I got out of there, and I went to a gas station. Because at that time, yeah. I don't know if I could hold both. It's like, know. listen, this I is know. coming. Yeah, this I, is, this is what's me. happening. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> it was really stressful. So you can also fail if your water, if your pee is too much water. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you're trying to flush your system out. Right. So for the last 24 hours, you drank like three gallons of water. Right. Then, then they're going to know that you're trying to flush something out. So, yeah. Anyway, harder to yeah. uh, fake a test than I mean, you might think. Mike, I mean, I've been tested once or twice. It's like straight coffee when it is mm-hmm. tested. <laughs> like, like, sir, you drink a lot of coffee, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, that was, that's my second. I thing. did see that. That was pretty funny. Okay. So my second thing is, um, so have you? What are the different foods? in your life that you've had delivered to you? So pizza is that, an obvious that's one. That's the obvious one. Yeah. Uh, Chinese. I've had Chinese delivered. Okay. Um, I've had... That might be it. I don't even think I mean, I've had I Chinese food delivered to me. Yeah, we were on vacation or something yeah. and had Chinese food. So like subs, like sub sandwiches. Like from a pizza place, though. From a pizza place. Yeah. So I feel like that's still in the vein of you went to a and pizza And then fried place. food, mozzarella sticks. Yeah, but that's still pizza place still food. Still pizza place food, yeah. Well, so there's that the whole, uh, what's it called, the the DoorDash. There's DoorDash so and Uber Eats. And, there's this whole thing. People are getting yeah. like McDonald's and Wendy's Taco and stuff Bell. Yeah. delivered to them. And nearly, I just read this statistic, nearly 30% of food delivery drivers admit to snacking on the food they're responsible for delivering, according to a study, for, a study from U.S. Foods. I 100% believe it. How are you not going to have a McDonald's fry? So, like, obviously, if you're delivering a pizza, what are you talking about? Like, taking a pepperoni off? You know what I mean? Like, that's the most... You're not okay, gonna so come... listen, listen, listen. Read that stat one more time. 30% of food delivery drivers admit to snacking on the food they're responsible for okay. delivering. So one-third, 30%, one-third of the people snack. 
Yeah. So I don't know if that's every delivery they snack other yeah. than it's like, okay, one third tonight, of them, like once a week, they might do it. Yeah. Like a third of the people admit to have done so it. So it's not like three out of every 10 things. Deliveries. You deliver it's not house. every delivery. Yeah. Now I will say this. I would say every McDonald delivery with fries, mm-hmm. there's going to be a fry or two missing. Yeah. I, that I can't have that. I don't want sh- the thought of your dirty fingers getting into my fr- I, that is so wrong to there me. should be a way to seal it there like a mcdonald's be. stamp like yeah you know the wax mm-hmm. seal the Agreed. old like the the roman something official to know s- that the- chuck over here has not been digging in my fries yeah would you if you were a food delivery driver snack on the food yes i used to deliver pizzas um but once again very hard to do that. My favorite thing is when you deliver pizza and it's wrong, and so I well, take it back, yeah. sitting in my back mm-hmm. seat. I'm yeah. eating that all night. Um, have you delivered pizzas? Yeah. Uh, did you ever have anybody invite you in when you delivered? Uh, not in a permanent – like if it's raining or snowing, oh, you yeah. step inside the door, they sign the receipt. I've, I've deli- I delivered to multiple parties where they're like, hey, come on in. Have some pizza. Here's a beer. You know, I'm like, yeah, I, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, I'm making money right now. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm working. Yeah, I, I'm not like, going to Like, I'll do come that. back after my shift. But. One time I delivered a pizza. Now, I delivered pizzas in Prospect, Ohio. So, I mean, that. I delivered up at Players. Okay, so t- totally different clientele. Totally different. I once delivered a pizza, like, kind of off the river, right? So, you okay. know, like, the opposite side of the river. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Those houses it's over there. It's almost like the other side of the tracks. It, it is. And um, so I had never delivered to this place before, and it's like one large pizza. And um, I, I, the door is like halfway open, and so I kind of knock on the door and I'll, come on in, you know, kind of a thing. This I don't know, three hundred pound plus, maybe honestly, maybe five hundred pound gentleman, yeah, sitting on his couch with no shirt on and a gun, like wow, like holding like a a gun, like a pistol or it was shotgun, like a shotgun, or... you know. Okay. And he's like, just set it down right there. <laughs> I was like, yes, sir. He's like, there's the money right there. You can take it and go. You know, I'm like, okay, that freaked me out. You know, yeah, I'm like can... this is not worth. I'll give you the pizza. This is not worth losing my life over. That kind of freaked me out a little bit. I've had some. I had one guy that I delivered to. In fact, I drive by his house. I mean, I'm sure it's not his house anymore. He still might live there. Yeah, um, somewhat frequently. And uh, I remember delivered a pizza there, and he and he went like he did the thing where you kind of pat him. He's like, oh. Shoot, I don't have a tip for you. He's like, I'll tell you what, I'll get you next time. I'm like, okay, thanks. I was naive enough to believe it. I never got called back out to that house, and he never got me a next time. Should I just show up at his house and be like, hey, dude, you owe me $3 plus interest? Well, he said next time, and there uh, never was a next time. Yeah. So technically, why are you he's taking still, this guy's side? I'm just saying. You think he's sitting there waiting for that one? I think any lawyer on the planet would say, <laughs> there was no next time. So mm. now I think what you ought to do is go to. You know, get a pizza at the local mm-hmm. place in Prospect yeah. and deliver it yourself even now. Sporty's Pizza is for sale. I really would love to buy it. Make it a Lower Road Radio studio. Oh, t- absolutely. We're slinging pizzas and making podcasts. I would do that. How much could you make at Sporty's Pizza? Like profit as yeah, the owner? Profit. I have no idea. I mean, you have good competition because Pierce's is... is I prefer Pierce's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I think what you do is you Sporties find Sporty's is a cool name. You... you Here's what you do. Before you buy Sporties, you get a job at Pierce's, and you find out what Trade the process secrets. is. Yeah. And then you go to Sporties, you own Sporties, and then you just basically were like Pierce's, but maybe a dollar cheaper or something. I think Pierce's ought to just buy Sporties. Honestly, that probably could work for them. Pierce's is the best. It's my favorite pizza. They period. make a great sub, too. Period. My favorite pizza, period. Period. Yeah. That's huge. Well... All right, what's your next thing? My next and final thing, thing number three. This happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, a fan at a baseball game threw 96 miles an hour in a pitch booth. You know, like in mm-hmm. the, you know, around the halls yeah. the halls. It sounds like the beginning of a movie. It might be the beginning of a movie. Yeah. Throws 96 miles an hour. Not once, but multiple times. That's not easy to do. That's not easy to do. So this guy played high school baseball, but that was it. Like he kind of yeah. gave up on it, and recently he started picking it back up again at 23 years old, uh-huh. but not in any like super official capacity. Yeah, he had surgery when he was younger, and so baseball never really worked out. Throwing 96 miles an hour. Listen, 96 is 96. Did it again in another minor league ballpark. Yeah. Like at, in Nashville. Yeah. At a separate one altogether. Yeah. The A's immediately signed him. Yeah, on they a minor did. league contract. The A's would, too. Well, it's Moneyball. Yeah. Come on. 
What do you of have course, to lose? Billy Bean is going to sign. How him. many people? How many human beings can throw ninety six miles an hour? Like point. I was, yeah, I was going to do a percentage. Like yeah, point zero one. Yeah, one in ten thousand of all people. Maybe, maybe more. Maybe, maybe one in a hundred thousand. Yeah, maybe one in a hundred. Because professional baseball players don't even hit ninety six. No. And he and here's a guy that's not even like got professional coaching and stuff. Like once you get him in there with professional coaching oh, yeah. and like on a workout regimen and you know you learn a couple of things. I mean, he he could be pushing 101, 102, maybe. Now he might be you know wild thing. Well, that's why you're going to get some coaching. Listen, any coach would rather have a guy who can throw consistently 100 miles an hour who they got to teach him some uh, you know, control to versus a guy that can throw in the 80s. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Yeah. I just thought that was fascinating. That's How very fast cool. could you throw a baseball right now? Today, I yeah. don't know, 70. Really? That's it? I don't know. It's harder to do than you think. I feel like I could hit 75. Yeah. Maybe. Which is – well, part of the thing is I threw my shoulder out like 15 years ago, and it just never came back. Like I used to know that I could throw a football so far, you know, yeah. and then I was – I just picked up a football once, and I chucked it, and I threw it, and something went like click in my arm. Yeah. And I was like, that's weird, and I was playing softball a couple weeks later, and it was just like I was not – like I would throw the ball, There's and no it zip. didn't hurt. It was just like there was nothing coming from it. Yeah. And, and I just kept on waiting for it to get better, and it never did. And my arm doesn't hurt when I throw. I just – Ever since that day, I just have no like pop at all. Yeah. So before that, I feel like I could throw. I feel like in the upper seventies. Yeah. You know, but today I think many many years ago, I think I hit seventy eight, mm-hmm. like at the Columbus Clippers. Yeah. There was a minor league ballpark and a pitching, yeah. you know, gun. I really want to know. You know, they set those um, signs up when you're driving. Yeah. You know, you're going twenty five miles an hour. Yeah. I it's, really want to see if I could throw a baseball in front of that. That's the movie it, The Rookie. Remember that movie with Dennis Quaid? Oh yeah, where he's and he's throwing it, and, he's, and it like kind of like, and he's wondering if he still has his fastball, and he throws it, and it says like seventy five, and he's like shoot, and he's walking, and then as he's walking away, that like uh, the numbers like make this like a buzz, buzz, buzz sound, like and you realize it was ninety five, yeah. and he didn't see it. I forgot about that. Movie. That's, That's a, a decent movie. movie yeah. It's it's all right. Made me cry, but you know any baseball movie is going to make me cry. Come on. Um. All right. My last thing, Jason, I hate to disparage a former guest on the show. I'm not trying to do this, but I feel like this is going to be obvious um, that people are going to be thinking about that. Anybody that listens to the show long term has realized that we once had somebody on who was really into wrestling. Yes. And so we were at Buffalo Wild Wings, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. I got a gift certificate for my birthday. We took the kids out. And it was like a random, I don't know, Tuesday night, Thursday night, Monday night. I don't know what it was. It was probably Monday night. It was a Monday night, and we took the kids out. And professional wrestling was on the big screen. What do you mean by professional wrestling? WWE or WWF or whatever they're okay. calling it now. And my kids had never seen it before. Even Levi had no reference point for it. He's like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. What is this? And I said, well, it's professional wrestling. And and he looks at me he's like, are you serious? Like, what what are these people doing? You know? Yeah. I was like, he's like, is this supposed to be real? You know? I was like, no. And I kind of explained it to him. And now the kids are like obsessed with it, and they're cracking up, laughing. And every really? time, like, yeah. there's like the fake punch with the foot oh, that yeah, goes yeah, yeah. down, and the thing, and the thing, and the thing, and, the, and they just think they're cracking up, laughing at this. Like, but this people the are in there for real, watching it. Dumbest thing. And I'm yeah. explaining to them, like, guys, like there are grown people who think this is real. There are grown people that like spend hours and hours every week. Like watching this, thinking about it, podcasting about it, and uh, <laughs> and I tell you what, I mean, once again, here's the thing. Okay, Jason, let me yes. just let me just say it. Let me just back up and say okay, this. Okay, just say okay. it. Just say it, Jason. If I was driving, okay, and I was driving toward a cliff, yes, and you had it within your power to warn me. Right, and to stand with a sign and said, "Hey, you're heading for a cliff. You know, stop." I would hope that you would do it. I would hope that you would not think, "Well, I don't want to offend him." You know. Yeah. And and you know, I, so I but but I'm gonna risk offending him to let him know, like you're headed towards a dead end, like you're gonna die. You know. Right. This is the way I feel about wrestling. Okay, I'm just gonna say anybody out there, you're whether people. you were on the show once or not, whatever. Um, listen. Stop it. It's this is not okay, good. Okay, so here's the thing. It's it's bad on every level. 
on every level it's when bad. we were six years it's old it's objectifying to women also by the way listen listen when we were six we loved it yes okay. and then we turned seven <laughs> I'm just saying it's a form of entertainment. These uh, people, it's dumb. These it's people, so they're stupid. Way more athletic than you will ever that, be. So what? They're doing. People acrobatics. are at the gym are athletic. I don't go to the gym and watch them work out. Well, that's obvious. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I might watch them. It doesn't. I mean, you don't go to the gym at all. It's yeah. I, I follow this guy. Uh, this guy on Instagram. He's really funny. Just always dad stuff. And he said something like. Um, it really annoys me when um, people at the brand, at the gym expect me to share my hash browns or something like that. Like, <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. Um, I, uh, I, I just, I just, it is so like I'm watching it, looking for something redeeming out of it. You know, the the the, the storyline, it's stupid. It plays into all of the worst parts of ourselves. Yeah, you know what I mean, like macho, stupid men who are yeah. just, rah, rah, not thinking of themselves. You know, I think Donald Trump Women, was on there once. Yeah, too. he was. Women who are like barely wearing anything, and the only reason they're up there is because the way that they look and they're projecting this image of what a woman is. That yeah. you know, it, it's like it's playing to the lowest common denominator of all of society. The deplorables. It, it is. It's awful. It's horrible. It's dumb. It's stupid. And as a show, well, I guess I'm only half of the show. So at, from my half of the show, I just want to denounce it and say that wrestling is dumb. I used to say that about soccer. Okay, well, that's very different. I used to say that soccer was that's dumb. That's very different. We grew up thinking that soccer was dumb. I grew up not understanding soccer. And we thought it was dumb. Yeah, but not no. in the way that wrestling, I thought well, wrestling is dumb, or I know wrestling is dumb. It's, <laughs> it's a different kind of thing. True or not just, true? Did, I don't remember thinking soccer is dumb. I remember thinking soccer is boring. And dumb. I, I don't that's remember a, thinking that it was up. dumb. Now, it's my favorite sport. Yeah. I'm just saying sometimes no. as you grow. This is not going to happen. As you develop in life. It's not going to happen. There are some things Jason, that change. Jason, do you think that one day you're going to grow up and like to eat food from a dumpster? Like, no. Like, some things you know. Like, I that stinks. No, know a lady that would dumpster dive for bread at a bakery. Well. And it was really, really good bread. Okay. So. Well, that's her. Never say no. God bless her. Not going to do it. I'll tell you about it later. Okay. It's fascinating. What's her initials? JW? <laughs> I would have loved it if you said JP because on our last episode, oh. I was hoping. Oh, JP, that, yeah. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what? No, but here, okay, so mm -hmm. really quickly, All right. I'll just finish it without getting too many details. She would dumpster dive for bread in a bakery dumpster. Mm -hmm. She made three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 a year. She sold the bread? No, no, no. She was a. Executive, oh, I see what you're saying. White collar. She didn't have to. She did not have to. Mm. That makes she it did this worse. because it was good bread. That's sad. I mean, you could buy the bread. Yeah, but once it's in a dumpster, it's free. I mean, rats and stuff can be picking through it. Well, like, I mean, it depends how quickly you pick it up. I'm not. No. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> no. All right. That's it. Wrestling's dumb. What is your Netflix suggestion of the week? I may have already done this, but I don't care. That's fine. Uh, I'm on season two. Of? On Amazon Prime. Okay. Monk. Oh, have, you I, have we talked have about this? this? I don't know. I don't know if I Monk ever is not. good. I love Monk. It's a solid watch. It is a solid it's watch. It's not like going to captivate you the way that, like, I don't know, 24 did. Or No. Um, and it, I don't even think it's binge worthy in the sense no, no, like no, no, Stranger it's very Things pleasant. you have to get through. That's right. You can have it on the background. Yes. You can just watch mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And to me, it has that classic sitcom feel. You're going to laugh a little bit, but there's also the whodunit aspect, trying yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Monk, very, very good. I mean, it's a it's it's a solid watch. It's an underrated mm -hmm. TV show. Yeah. And it's on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Um, I'm not sure how many seasons, but there was a bunch. Well, yeah. I mean, anytime you get something with like... Eight nine seasons. That's, that's good. That's cool. Yeah, that's a thing. You hang on to that. You and don't and listen. Listen. I'm listening. I stretch that out. Yeah, because this, this is, is like what I was three say. years worth of mm -hmm. entertainment. Yeah, I could bust it out in one weekend. Yeah, trust me. Mm -hmm. I've thought about it. <laughs> yeah, I but know. I really do. I want to stretch mm -hmm. this out. I might watch one here. Mm -hmm. I might watch one there. Yeah. Occasionally, I might mm -hmm. do two in a row. Yeah. But that's it. I'm not going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna watch a monk. You're going to say that every once in a while. You don't want to you know, you know, watch a monk. Turn on the monk. You know, I, I discovered while playing putt-putt that uh, my wife, when she when I say, hey, what'd you get on the hole? Wait, I was, do you need to think about this before you say it? Count to ten. No, I'm good. If she hears... Okay. So, um, 
I was keeping score. I have like an app to keep score, which okay. is cool because it gives me a leaderboard. So the you're whole not time. doing the golf pencil? No, because this is cool. It gives me like oh a leaderboard gosh. and it shows okay. you like under par and stuff. It's pretty cool. But um, so I get her score every time. And the lower her score is, the higher the pitch she says it. The worse her score is, the uh, lower the pitch she says it. Like with that, what'd you get? I got a two. I got a two. A two. If it's a, a what'd you get? Five. <laughs> like it, without a doubt, it's two, three, four, five, six, eight. <laughs> All at <in> one. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> so do you cap in putt putt golf? Do you cap it? We cap at six. Okay, that's how we do it. Yeah, because once you hit six, you just want to throw your your freaking. We, we cap it at eight because you got to have the snowman. snowman. I yeah. know. I cap it at eight when I'm golfing, <laughs> but <laughs> but putt putt. I think is there's six. no reason to have an eight in putt putt. No, there's no reason. And once you've done that, one, two, three, four, five, six, like you, you're really ready to throw your club into the pond. <laughs> so like, just pick it up, call it a day. So we've we've capped it at six. Yeah. Then some person's scorecard is going to be six six six. I can't do that. That's happened multiple times. <laughs> So, all right, my Netflix suggestion of the week. It's not a great thing. I mean, this is not this is not a monk. This is not a Stranger Things. You know, um, I don't know if I'd put monk and Stranger Things in this. Well, I'm category. just saying it's not even a it's it's not a Stranger Things. It's not even a monk. Okay, you see what I'm saying. So you're a C. This monk is a, is a B. Stranger is Things a, B. a monk yeah. is a B. This is a, a C. Okay, if you're interested in it, maybe if you're not interested in it, it's maybe an F. But uh, we, we like um, um, home improvement type shows. Yeah. Chip and JoJo, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, Fixer Upper. And um, so I started this one called the, what is it called? The Great uh, Interior Design Challenge is what okay. it's called. And uh, every episode, and it's British, so it's set up, it feels like. The Great British Baking Show. Yes, um, uh, like the way that they interview the people, the, the music, style of it, the yeah. style of it. You know, there's two judges and a host, so it's very much. I, I would almost guarantee that they made it after the Great British Baking Show as a knockoff because it's called the Great Interior Design Challenge. Right, um, but it's not as good as the Great British Baking Show. I'm gonna say that Paul right. Hollywood's not on it. Yeah, and it's not just the production level is not as good. Yeah. Um, so they take three amateur designers, okay, and they give them each similar spaces that have a, a homeowner that they yeah. have to appease, and then they have a meeting with the homeowner, and then they design the space. They're given a thousand dollars to do so, right? And then the judges come in and they decide who they think is the best, and that person moves on to the next round. Yeah, if they if you win. And uh, we've been watching it. It's all right. You know, it's pretty good. I, I enjoy it. I, I like it. So Erica does not like it as much as the other things. But the other things, it's like that we watch home improvement shows, it's over and it's always like, yeah, that looks fantastic. I mean, that's amazing. That's incredible. They did an well, awesome job. Do you ever job. watch Trading Spaces? But this, I maybe did. Man, that's, that's horrible. Some of those designers are horrible. Yeah. And so that's what I like about this. Yeah. I like the fact that it's that it's like it can be over. You're like, what the heck was that where like, did your money go yeah what did you spend it why on? do you have pelicans everywhere yeah you know what i mean like yeah, just yeah, yeah. the weirdest things like you have green and purple in the same you know what i mean like it's yeah you know because they're like you know and everybody's got these crazy british accents you know it's yeah. like, oh, i want to go you know modern and you know a little bit to you know uh retro and i want to bring glued some... pennies up on the wall <laughs> yeah it's like all that kind of like, stuff what like, and they always interview them in their home you yeah. know at first and they're sitting in their living room you know it's like my style is art deco and and it's like <laughs> You're looking at their living room like, oh, this person does not know what they're doing. Yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah. So um, I like it because of because I like to look the down awkward, on people. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Okay. Um, Six hundred pound life. Say it that way. Orders. All these shows. <laughs> it makes me makes feel me better feel, about which me. Which is the whole point of life is yeah. me feeling good about myself. It's the same thing with Honey Boo Boo. Mm-hmm. I've not I actually can't watch that. I can't even. Listen, you're I can't gonna, even you're watch. Gonna, if you could watch that, you'd feel fabulous about your own family. <laughs> I'm sure I would. I can't even watch a commercial of that show. It just, I can't. I honestly, I turn it when I've seen a commercial. Is that even on anymore? I don't know. I've seen we commercials watched it for years it, ago, when, and I turn it, it off on. when the yeah. commercials on. I can't. I can't even. So anyway, this show, if you're into that sort of thing, it's competition, so that's fun. You know, if you like that sort of thing. But I've been watching it, so that's my Netflix suggestion of the and week. I is it on it's Netflix? I, it's on Netflix. Okay, yeah. Some sort of some, some kind of British thing, but yeah, did you it. see real quick? Real quick, Disney. Yeah, I mean, we only have so much time. Yeah, Disney introduced 
a bundle for their Disney Plus off of Hulu. Off of Hulu, yeah, I did see Disney that. Plus mm-hmm. and ESPN Plus. Oh, they're like together. All three of them, because they're all owned by the same people. Yeah, mm-hmm. twelve ninety nine a month. So you get what do you get for twelve ninety nine? ESPN month? Plus, mm-hmm. Disney Plus, uh-huh. and Hulu. Really? Yes, that's the best deal going. Yeah, I think people now, are going to drop. Is Disney Plus going to have everything Disney? I, I don't know. That's what I mean, I they haven't know. released it yet. Am I going to have every uh, Avenger, Marvel, Marvel movie at my Star fingertips? Star Wars, and Disney just bought Fox. Yeah. So will all of the Fox stuff be on there? If it's all on there, if they're like they we're just dumping like all our of catalog. our stuff here, yeah. then yes, sign me up. Because me and the kids will go through the Marvel thing like in order because we've wanted to like, do that. We'll go in order every day, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, sure. Yeah. Like we'll start like, at Iron Man one mm-hmm. and we'll end it in game. Yeah. Um, that, that's another thing, by the way, that Netflix needs to do is the playlist. Yes. Why have they not done this? I don't know. I need to set up a playlist to be like, this is like all day. I'm going to be cleaning. All yes. Day. So I want to see like Clint Eastwood movies all day and I want to yes. line them up. Yes. So that way this, this there's the- no reason why this already hasn't happened. Do it. It angers me. <laughs> I because can listen, see. we are background. Just sit down, listen. Jason, sit down, please. We are background <laughs> movie people. We are. We have movies in the background all the time. Uh, okay, real quick. Mount Rushmore of things to have on in the background. I swear I thought that you I turned that off. You told me I that you would I shut that I off. Did. You told me you would shut it off. I thought I did. Oh, my gosh. I think we were – our last episode, we had some technical difficulties. And when those technical difficulties happened – all right, really quickly. What is – the Mount Rushmore of stuff to have on the TV in the background while you're cleaning or doing something else. Okay. So I enjoy, do I hear a baby crying? Yeah, I think okay. so, every once in a while somebody drops a baby off at Lower Road Radio Studios. We pick them and up and take them to the orphanage. Yeah, I just want to make sure I wasn't hearing something. I was, I've got five kids. Sure. Yeah. yeah that's right, why. Yeah. Uh, I can't, I can't afford okay. it anymore. Background. So I, I'm going to say, like, so I like the Ken Burns baseball thing. I've done that quite a bit because there's like nine of them, and I mm-hmm. could just play it. Okay, um, that's not really. a go-to I don't want to say for specific. Me. Here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say like genre, right? So like, like westerns might be one. Okay, documentaries might be one. Well, documentaries is one. I want to sure. make a strong push for baseball game. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. Baseball and golf. Baseball and golf. But I'm gonna, I'll just say baseball. I think baseball game is the best thing to just have on in the background during a during you know. This is also a seasonal thing. It is a seasonal thing because in the fall, a lot of times we'll have football on. Yeah. College football is playing. Yeah, and you know we're just doing stuff. Sure. Yeah. So we want to do sports. Yeah, sports. Okay, we'll say sports. documentaries. Although I do feel like baseballs. Listen, you know. we could rank the sports in order. All right, but uh, really quickly, sports to have on in the background while you're cleaning. Baseball, Baseball, golf, golf, tennis, yeah, women's golf. In any Olympic sport. (laughs) I don't know. Olympic sports are going to make me sit down. Not all of them. It's not all of them. All right. There's a lot like water polo. I love water polo. Well, that's when the Olympics are happening, you always have them on whether you're watching them. I'm not not. talking about the Olympics. I'm talking about Olympic events. Ah, There's an Olympic channel on YouTube TV. Got it, got it, got it. And they're all qualifier stuff. Very good. I'm with you. Okay, there it is. Baseball, golf, tennis, and uh, Olympic sports. Olympic sports. Okay, so then things to have on. So sports is one of those things. Westerns is absolutely I think that's one. I wanted yeah. to make a strong push for Westerns. We do a lot of uh, – I love John Wayne. Yeah. There's a lot of John Wayne So we there. got sports. Yeah. We got Westerns. Documentaries. Documentaries. And I, I'm a big fan of like old school, like Paul Newman, Steve McQueen. Maybe not Western, but like that older movie. Mm-hmm. They're not as exciting. There's not yeah. a lot of stuff happening. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, it's like Lord of the Rings. Oh, I have the yeah. extended editions. Yeah. Like, I would just have those on all the time because I love the soundtrack. I don't know if we can do, like, in my house with the kids, the orcs. Yeah. The orcs are scary. The orcs are scary. We ain't had nothing to eat but maggoty bed for breakfast three days. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. That was the weakest. Mount that was Rushmore weak. Ever. It just kind of trailed off at the end. But, you know, sometimes that happens. 
Not every Mount Rushmore will be the Mount we Rushmore just of Mount that. Rushmores. Yeah. Should we one do day, the Mount Rushmore of Mount Rushmore? One that we've day. Done? We're not, not done with the Mount Rushmores. Our last we're, episode. We're not done with the presidency of the United States yet. Yeah. Our last episode will be the Mount Rushmore of Mount Rushmores that we've done. Okay. Which, by well, the way, I think Saved by the Bell belongs on that list. Absolutely. <laughs> There's no doubt. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Dan signing off for Jason, reminding you to keep your stick on the ice and never wear the blue sweats. Thank you.